Let's talk about somebody who's had a very, very interesting preseason, and that is quarterback David Fells. Finishing, capping off the preseason with a three-touchdown game, his overall stats throughout the preseason, throwing five touchdowns, one interception, and a QBR of 99, is very, very, very impressive. Um, and it was really nice to see him finish off strong, especially since the fact that he barely got any reps throughout the week. Um, and having that strong of a performance and having that kind of touch on the deep ball um, is very, very uh, promising. Uh, when you look at quarterback David Fells. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the Dolphins do with him. Um, obviously, there's been some connections with the Jaguars. The Jaguars in the market for a quarterback. They might be interested, but he's had a very strong... Uh, he's had a very up and down preseason, I would say. Uh, it's, there's been some very inconsistent play there. Not all of his fault, um, but some of it has been his fault. Obviously, when you look at the Falcons game, uh, started off the preseason with a very strong game in that game, um, but there were some downs in that game, throwing that interception... Uh, in the red zone. Then you go to the Ravens game, first drive of the game, first drive that David Fells is in. He leads a touchdown drive. Looks very, very, very nice. After that, no show. Did see him right. For, no, granted, the pass protection that game was very poor, um, but he played. There were some plays where uh, the timing was really, really bad in that game in the quarterbacks, um, and he did not have the greatest game himself. Not all his fault, but some of it was his fault. Then you go to the Eagles game, basically a no show in that game. Um, at all, you heard nothing from David Fells, uh, and then obviously finishing off the preseason strong uh, against the Vikings. Uh, and this is by far his most consistent game, not throwing one interception. I thought he looked really nice against pressure, especially when uh, the Vikings love running that double gap blitz, and it was coming strong uh, with both with both linebackers there. I thought he stood in the pocket, made the throws that he needed to throw. The perfect example of that was the touchdown to Mitch Matthews. I thought he looked really nice on that throw. That's poise right there. Um, and obviously when Brandon Dowdy faced some of those double uh, gap blitzes, completely different story really panicked in the pocket didn't keep his eyes downfield David Fells kept cool and calm found his receiver and made the and, and made the play uh, there was one play where he missed which uh, they sent the, the double gap blitz there um, I'm not gonna say he panicked but he didn't see Drew Morgan and he was wide up for, he was wide open for the touchdown uh, and that was the only play he missed uh, other than that he had a very 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 good night uh, had connection with Jakeen Grant all night long, had beautiful touch on the deep ball. So again, like my point is is he's probably had the best pre he has had the best preseason out of any of the other backup quarterbacks. When you look at Matt Moore, he's had he had a very poor preseason, obviously throwing that red zone interception against the Eagles. Really never got the offense going throughout the entire preseason. Granted, didn't get a lot of, you know, reps, didn't get a lot of drives. Um, but uh, when you look at Dowdy compared to Dave Fells, it's not even close. Uh, Brandon Dowdy's best game came against the Falcons, and he didn't even have the greatest game in that game, obviously throwing the one touchdown to Leontay Carew. But uh, David Fells uh, looked really nice, looked very consistent. The timing was there, and that's surprising considering the fact that most of these guys he's barely thrown to. So uh, David Fells, very nice performance in his last game. Um, hopefully, it's going to be very interesting to see what we do with him, especially since he's had by far the best performance out of any of the uh, backups. You always want depth at quarterback. You never know what's going to happen. Um, and he's been very impressive. Again, he can clean up, clean up some of the timing and the footwork, and maybe that comes with reps with the timing. I just feel like he doesn't get the ball out fast enough. I think he holds the ball too long sometimes, needs to make decisions quicker. If he can clean some of that up, if he can clean the timing up, he can be a very solid quarterback and a very solid backup quarterback in this league. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the Dolphins do with him. And I'm interested to see if he goes to a team, maybe we do trade him, and he gets reps, what he can do. Obviously, him. some of the stuff that you saw of David when he was in Chicago, I think he looks like a totally different player now. Um, and he looked he's looked through good, good throughout. Again, some ups and some downs, but overall has had the best preseason out of any of the uh, backup quarterback since again it could be very interesting to see what the Dolphins do Let's talk about a player that has utterly surprised me throughout preseason and that is cornerback Cordrea Tankersley He continues to have I mean when I talk about consistency I don't just mean this man had a great game one game and then followed it up with an okay game He's had three really strong performances in the Ravens game the Eagles game um, And now in the uh, Vikings game. He's looked he looked amazing 
um, amazing last night. Uh, he looked awesome. Um, you know, some of the things that he struggled with in college was too physical. And, you know, you see that with corners sometimes. You can't get away with half the stuff you get away with in college on the NFL level. You got to get your hands off of your receiver. Obviously, when you see somebody who uh, definitely needs to work on their technique coming out of college, it takes a while. And I thought he was going to be a prospect. I didn't think he was going to take any kind of meaningful snaps until next season. Um, and, you know, that hasn't been a problem with him at all throughout preseason. I think he was called for one pass interference throughout the entire preseason, and that was um, against the Atlanta Falcons. I thought his technique looked really nice. Um, it's looked clean. He's gotten his hands off a receiver. Um, and you would think, you know, that was a big part of his game in college, and there was a big question mark if if he could do, if he could, you know, if he could clean up his technique and still be a very, very uh, productive player. Um, and he's answered those questions throughout preseason. Um, and, you know, in the running game, uh, he, you know, I haven't really seen any, I can't think of any time that he's just been, he just blatantly missed, um, you know, a tackle in space. That was a question mark coming out of college. Um, and he's just looked, he's just looked utterly surprising. It's great news for Dolphins fans and the Miami Dolphins as an organization because you lose Tony Lippett to an um, Achilles injury. Uh, you're not sure what the depth looks like in that room. You bring Altron Werner in. Um, you think he's going to fill that role. If not, if Bobby McCain struggles, fill that slot corner role. Now that we have Cordrea, um, and we're going to talk about another cornerback that has looked really good throughout preseason as well, the cornerback depth looks really nice. And I think the Dolphins can sleep uh, you know, well at night, and I think Dolphins fans can as well, knowing that they have depth in that cornerback room, even though that we lost one of our key contributors last year um, in cornerback Tony Lippett. Cordray Tankersley looks like he's going to take meaningful snaps this upcoming season, and he's going to have an impact on the 2017 season. He has earned it. He has looked amazing. Um, he has earned playing time in the regular season, so I'm excited to see what he can do, because I think he can be, you know, and one of the things that he did uh, well in college was ball skills. So I would expect Cordrea Tankersley to make some plays this upcoming season, uh, the way he's looked out, looked throughout preseason. And again, he has stayed consistent. He has stayed consistent. Uh, each game he's played, he's been consistent. So uh, I'm very, very excited to see what Cordrea can do in the 2017 season. This particular performance made me really happy, and I was excited uh, that this particular player had this performance, and that is running back Kenyon Drake. I mean, he looked comfortable within the offense. He looks like, to me, he looks like a totally different player. Um, last year, he looked like a wide-eyed rookie that really was just, um, he was running off of ability, not really running within the scheme and using his ability to succeed within the scheme. Um, and in this game, he just, I mean, he just looks comfortable within the scheme. He's running hard. He's, he, he looked amazing. He looked comfortable. That's probably the most comfortable I've seen Kenyon throughout preseason I've been talking about this throughout preseason I think Kenyon has looked him and Damian Williams just look way more comfortable within the offense and I it just makes me so excited to see what this these trio of running backs can do with Jay Ajayi, Damian Williams and Kenyon Drake I truly do believe and I've said this before but I think that this trio of this is probably the best trio in the league I mean you know one of our uh you know one of one of the people in the, in the community that we have on this channel uh brought up a great comparison I cannot remember his name but compared it to the Zonka Jim Kick and Mercury Morris and these three are super talented um we haven't had a I mean a duo slash trio like this since Ronnie Brown and um uh Ricky Williams and with this offensive line if the offensive line can stay healthy and we can have all three of these guys with the talent that we have with uh, out on the perimeter and in the slot and again if the offensive line can stay healthy I don't know how you stop our offense um, and I know that sounds, you know, maybe that sounds a little over the top, but I'm serious. Like, the the, the talent that we have in that backfield, um, I don't know. I, I, I really, like, enjoy watching all three of those players play. They all have different running styles. And I thought Kenyon Drake looked really nice, um, obviously capping off the drive with a, with a sick lunge in the end zone. Um, you know, Kenyon is a very big back. Uh, Surprise! a lot of people don't know, he's six foot two. He's a big dude, and he can run like a deer. So he has tremendous ability. And like I said, last year he looked like a wide-eyed rookie who was using ability to run, and he really didn't know the scheme. He was just he was just working off ability. This year, he's using that ability within the scheme, and he looks way more comfortable. So uh, I'm, it makes me very excited to see what all three of these guys can do this upcoming season, and he just adds another weapon, not only in the running game, but also in the passing game. Now, in the podcast previewing this video, I wanted to see a particular player have a 
good performance. I don't even want to see him like have 150 yards. I didn't want to see him have a crazy game. I didn't want to see him, you know, score a 40-yard touchdown. I just wanted to see him catch some balls and make some plays. Um, and that is wide receiver Drew Morgan. I thought he looked really good out there. Uh, there were a couple plays that were left on the field. I alluded to earlier um, when I was talking about David Fells. He had a wide open touchdown in the middle of the football field. Uh, if David just saw him, uh, he would have walked into the end zone. There, were, he, you know, he caught some screens. He looked good in the open football in, in the open field. Um, you know, there was that play where it was a corner out to the sideline. He ran right under uh in between the coverage there beautiful route and a great throw by uh david fails to give it to him there but uh it was nice to see him move the sticks a couple times and we haven't seen drew morgan obviously this by far was his best game um but it was nice to see drew morgan uh, make plays because he has had a tremendous off season uh he's had a really really good off season he had a great otas he was catching touchdowns for training camp it's nice to see that translate to a game like uh atmosphere um and i hope he makes the football team because there are a lot of uh, players on this roster, especially in the receiver room, that are going to be let go, that are going to be uh, contribute to other NFL teams, and they're going to make plays. I really do hope the Miami Dolphins keep Drew Morgan. I like what he, his ability, especially catching screens. I like his shiftiness um, uh, when he does that. Uh, obviously, he has that special teams background there, uh, so he's that Julian. He's, he's not. He doesn't have Julian's athleticism. I don't think he's as athletic, but. Um, he definitely has that quickness that Julian has, um, and that's about the only similar similarities between the two. I'm just saying um, he has that ability of catching screens, uh, you know, to move in the open field, and he's a great route runner. And that was a perfect perfect example of that was that corner out uh, on the sideline. So it was just really nice to see Drew Morgan make plays because we've heard a ton about him in practice, and we heard a ton about him in OTAs, and then we finally saw that on game day. So I don't know I don't know what the Dolphins are gonna do with him. Um, but I know the coaching staff likes him a lot. I know Adam likes him a lot. I know Sean Jefferson likes him, the, the receiver coach. So uh, we'll see what they do. But very, very nice to see him have a, uh, that kind of performance on Thursday. This probably surprised a lot of fans, and it was awesome to see it on Thursday, and it makes you feel really good for this upcoming season, and we needed it so bad. Um, but I thought both of these guys, Cordrea Tankersley and Tory McTire, especially Cordrea, I think he's overall, I think, I, I think not to throw the word great around, like, you know, all the time, but I thought he had a really, really, really fantastic preseason. Tory had a solid preseason. Um, you know, Cordrea was a little bit more consistent, but Tory, I mean, wait up end it off like really way to end it off uh to read some of his stats here mctire had an outstanding game coverage for the dolphins thursday night he uh he had 31 snaps in coverage he was only targeted four times only which one of which was caught mctire added two pass defenses uh to stop on third down so tory just tory and coverage you know it was just really fun to watch both of those corners play um that's who i keyed on keen eye on immediately because I wanted to see those two have a strong performance because both of them have looked really nice throughout preseason and they've stayed consistent and it was really nice to see Torrey finish it off and obviously with the injury to Tony Lippett again there were question marks in that cornerback room we bring in Werner we have two young studs for the future of this defense um, and obviously Xavier Howard I think all three of those these young those young corners have a very bright future in the NFL and the secondary looks super talented um, especially in the future. I think the Dolphins have done a great job of adding talent to that secondary, um, and the secondary unit has a very, very bright future. This next player, if the Dolphins let this, this player go, I'm going to be upset, and that is linebacker Chase Allen. Talks about dominating the tackle box. I mean, obviously he leads the team in tackles throughout preseason, but this man does not miss tackles, and he is physical in the running game. Chase Allen pops people, and when you think of what the Dolphins need at linebacker, they go out and they sign Ray Maluga, right? They sign him to be that guy who dominates the tackle box on base downs. To be honest with you guys, I think that that move looks really stupid right now, because Chase Allen, why can't he do that? Now, obviously, he's not going up against the ones, um, and maybe the Dolphins see something different in practice, I guess, um, to make them think he can't do that. Uh, I hope that's the case, but Chase Allen, uh, uh, it sucks that we didn't get him more reps against other, uh, against first team defenses, or excuse me, first team offenses, to see what he could do, because um, I thought he looked tremendous on Thursday night. He, again, he's been so consistent. He's dominated the competition he's gotten to play against. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I, I really like Chase Allen, and, you know, he, maybe he can't be the coverage linebacker 
but that's not what this defense needs. They need a base down guy, um, either in the middle of the football field or on the outside, which I think Chase his talents fit more in the middle. But they need that, and he's been that throughout the entire preseason. Um, so, I, you know, I know that you know the Dolphins have you know they're looking obviously for everybody to cut down to the fifty three man roster. They're going to be looking at different uh, linebackers, but they have one in their own building right now, Chase Allen, that is the perfect linebacker. For their needs and I, I i don't know why he couldn't be ray maluga uh he's more athletic than ray is at this point in his career obviously he's not a veteran and again uh maybe the dolphins see something different in practice but it, it they, they what a missed opportunity to see him get more reps against the ones because he's he's outplayed michael at middle linebacker like he has outplayed him throughout preseason now obviously mike went against the ones more uh than chase did but mike has struggled against the same talent that chase um has um dominated so um it, it really interesting to see it's gonna be really interesting to see what the dolphins do with him because i think he's a i think he's he should make the roster i think he should make the roster i think he's had a tremendous performance just to read um you know uh pro football focus gave him an uh, an 88 overall grade um and just to read his some of his stats here um uh, Allen was the definition of a linebacker who was all over the field against the Vikings. It seemed that he was involved in every play for the Dolphins' defense. Allen finished with nine tackles, five of which resulted in an offensive line failure. Allen was particularly great in run defense, where he earned a grade of 91.4. That is, guys, that is exactly what the Dolphins and the doctor ordered for the Miami Dolphins. He is in-house. And again, it sucks that we didn't get to see him play against the ones more, but, you know, I don't know. I, I really like Chase Allen. I hope he makes the roster. He, the undrafted rookie out of, uh, what was it, uh, uh, Missouri, I can't remember uh, what college he played for right now. It's, it, I always forget what college Chase plays for. But anyway, he's had a great, great, great preseason, and he deserves, I think, I think he's earned a roster spot. You got to save the best performance for last, and that was wide receiver Jakeem Grant. Uh, I mean, I know everybody's been talking about his performance on Thursday, and it was tremendous. Obviously, four catches uh, for, I think, 143, 144 yards, and he was the epitome, he was the epitome of what he was at Texas Tech, um, and he was the reason why Mike Tannenbaum vouched for him in the draft, um, and the Dolphins ended up taking him, because he is such a deep threat, and, you know, an underrated part of his game, and, you know, Sean Jefferson talked about it, uh, and so did Kai Christensen, the offensive coordinator, of how underratedly good he is at route running. Clyde said he's one of the best route runners on the football team. And when you look at some of the route runners on this team, you look at Jarvis Landry, you look at Kenny Stills, who are tremendous route runners in their own right, um, and then you look at Jakeem Grant and you think, you know, you haven't seen enough of him. So you don't know. And you saw that on full display on Thursday night. You know, and it's nice to see him be consistent because that has been the biggest problem with uh, Jakeem throughout uh, his career here in Miami is his consistency. He has dropped so many balls in training camp and so many balls um, in practice. Um, and he's put back-to-back -back great games where, you know, in the Eagles game, he catches a ball in traffic. In the Eagles game, he catches a ball in traffic, sandwiched between two people, and then somehow stays on his feet and runs it all, I think, for like, what, a 70-yard touchdown? Um, and in the Vikings game, he, in traffic, and again, this has been the knock on Jigen Grant, is his hands. Um, in traffic, in between two people, beautiful, beautiful throw by Brandon Dowdy. Um, he catches it, tiptoes on the sideline, um, and then you know, what a tremendous catch! When I first saw that, I didn't think it was a catch, but uh, man, does he play above his size as well? He is super athletic. He he adds so much problems for any other defense, especially when you see Jakeem Grant on the football field. You have to account for that. Um, especially when you're going against our offense where teams love to stack the box when J.H.I. is in. You put Jay in at the same time as Jakeem Grant. That's a problem. That's a problem, guys. And Jakeem Grant, um, what a performance he had. Again, I think he had, I think it was four catches for 140 yards, a touchdown. Um, he was great in play action. Uh, and I cannot wait to see what he does for the 2017 season. Uh, you know, and another thing to bring to bring up that not a lot of people talk about, but... When we drafted him, we wanted him to play slot receiver, and ever since we want, ever since we switched him back outside, which is the his natural position, which is the position he played in college at Texas Tech, a totally different player. I mean, I, I don't know if you know Jakeem finally. I think they what it, did they switch costumes? I don't know what it was, but I think it's his ability. I think playing slot was too physical for him. I think. 
he wasn't strong enough to get off press in the slot. And obviously on the outside, if you play outside, um, you know, corners tend to play way, way farther off than they do in the slot. In in the slot, you're, you're looking at way more press coverage. You're looking at way more physical play. Obviously, you have to block in the slot if you're going to be a successful slot receiver. Um, the, the slot receiver is a... You, you can't... You can get away with that on the outside. You cannot get away with that. Uh, you cannot get away with that in the slot. So... You, you, there's a lot more on your plate in the slot, and I think him switching to outside, obviously, that's where all the pro, that's where he's, you know, obviously been his best at college. It's just been it's just been the best thing we've done with him since we drafted him, and he's looked like a totally different player. And I cannot wait to see what he can do for the 2017 season. All right, let's talk about the offense as a group. Um, I thought it was really nice to see the run blocking, especially on that first drive. And really all night, it was really it was so much better than it has been in weeks past. Um, just so much, so much better. Um, you know, it was nice to see Jake Brindell get out there and Jesse Davis um, have a good night in the run blocking game. Um, and it was like night and day. I mean, when you compare the run blocking on that first drive to some of the run blocking, it's it's like what what like it, it totally different. Totally, it's like we drafted a, another a new five guys so it was nice to see that um i thought the running backs as a group i thought storm johnson had a solid game um i thought uh obviously we talked about Kenyon before um but i thought storm had a, a very 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 solid game uh not only in the running game but in the past game he had a big reception uh for i think 25 30 yards um and uh, i thought the screen game was way the screens were executed the best it's I've seen them executed probably since Adam Gase has been a Dolphins head coach. Uh, there was one that was left if if executed properly, um, and it was a nice play by the Vikings. I think it was their linebacker defensive end would have been a touchdown, but is what it is. But I thought overall the screens looked a thousand times better. Uh, we definitely looked more comfortable running them. Obviously, no starters played, but you know, uh, obviously I thought the offense as a group. Definitely had a bounce back performance in terms of the you know the second third team guys compared to what they were last week against the Eagles. Um, our first team offense you know was the only pr- productive unit uh, for most of the night. Obviously there were some big plays by Jakeem and plays by Jakeem, but I thought you know the fluidity of the offense and the consistency was just night and day. Especially when David Fells was in at quarterback, the, the unit really worked and gelled together. Um, like probably the best in terms of the second third team, the best it's looked all uh, all preseason. It was really nice to see the young uh, players uh, really have a strong performance on offense because you know they've struggled for most of the preseason. That third to fourth, uh, excuse me, that second to third unit uh, really haven't done a ton. So it was nice to see them have a coming out party. Um, especially, you know, we got players like who just who basically just arrived here. You know, Mitch Matthews, uh, you know, catching a touchdown there. Marquise Gray, I forgot about him. Continues to have a strong preseason. He's another guy uh, that has had has been very consistent and has been surprising and been surprising because we have the two headliners, Anthony Bassano and Julius Thomas. But Marquise Gray, not only is he a tremendous run blocker, but he's a really nice route runner. He knows the scheme. And he exploits that, and you saw that on uh, against the Vikings. Um, so it was really nice to see the offense, you know, more fluid. Nice to see the offense more fluid, more consistent. The timing is there when, when David Fells is in the ball game. You know, some of the negatives that I wanted to see more of, but I'm t- I'm hesitant to even call it a negative because of some of the plays that were left out there. You know, I wanted to see a little bit more from Leonte Crew, but he would have had like a, I think a 60 yard touchdown if that if Brandon Dowdy gives him a better ball there. So I'm not. You know, he was one bad throw away from having a you know a solid game. So I'm not gonna you know criticize the man too much, but you definitely want to see a little bit more from Leonte Crew. Other than that, I I was it was a great night to see you know the young the young group for the Dolphins. It's definitely going to be tough for some of these guys to be cut because we have tremendous talent in that receiver room, um, and it's going to be tough to let some of these guys go. Uh, it really really is, and they had a, they had one heck of a, a, a last night as a Dolphin if some of them uh, if this was their last night as a Finn uh, and it was really nice to see the offense be more fluid together especially that you know that second third team unit uh, be more fluid uh, be more consistent the timing was there when David Wells was in at QB um, it was nice to have a strong performance for those young guys at, for their final uh, for the final preseason game all right so let's talk about the defense as a group and uh, what they did uh Overall, I thought, you know, I thought the run, I thought especially this was the fastest start the defense has had. They locked up in that first half, um, you know, and they looked really nice. The few, the first few series there, the, the, we really we suffocated uh, the Vikings as an offense, and we were really physically uh, imposing our will on them. I mean, 
when you look at what our D-line did, they dominated the entire night. Um, I can't remember the their, uh, their uh, uh, backup quarterback's name right now, but it looked like we were going to, like, he was getting pounded all night. Like, our defensive line was in his face all night, obviously getting the safety. That was huge. Um, that's probably the biggest player by our defensive line all preseason. It was nice to see the the undrafted rookie out of Houston. I can never pronounce his name right, but he's you know he's had two sacks this preseason. He's looked really nice, especially you know not so much in the running game, but definitely uh, as a pass rusher. So the defensive line to, again had, had a pretty nice performance. I thought they had a nice performance in last week's game. Uh, they just really struggled with open field tackling, and you saw some of that this, in, in the Vikings game. Um, but the defensive line played great. The secondary, how I mean, what a ba- what a bounce back game uh, for obviously it wasn't the first team unit. It was the, the young guys. But it was nice to see the secondary probably have the best overall performance they've had uh, throughout the preseason. Even though number 16 for the Vikings, his name is escaping me right now, had a, had a, had a really good game against us. But other than that, uh, and some of that was, you know, again, we're, we'll talk about that here here in just a second. But I thought the secondary played amazing. Um, you know, Cheech McDonald probably, that was the last we've seen, we're going to see of him for many weeks. So it, he had a solid game. Um, you know, I, so let's talk about the linebackers as a unit. Um, I thought, you know, obviously I, we, we talked about Chase Allen. I thought he had a tremendous game. But uh, Lacey, he's been hit or miss for me all preseason. Um, you know, I thought, you know, there were, he had a lot of a lot of plays where you're like, that's what I want to see from you because he's athletic and he's great in coverage. He dropped a pick six. Um, was it Lacey or was it somebody else? It might have been Lacey or maybe I, I think I'm getting plays mixed up. But if, it was, if that wasn't him, he still had some – he had a couple plays in coverage where he's looked really nice. There was a play where he had a nice tackle in the open field. Uh, but, again, he's been hit or miss. Uh, you know, there was that touchdown on the goal line uh, where he got across his body uh, and he, co- he caught it. Uh, it was – you know, I'm not going to say it was a terrible cover zone because it was a nice job by the receiver finding the hole there. But you got to come up and make that tackle. And Lacey just completely – I mean, I that was, that was just – that was bad, and you can't do that if you're going to be in the NFL. So, again, very inconsistent, but he had some plays there where you're like, you could be a very, very good nickel linebacker um, if you could just fix the tackling issues. But uh, he's super athletic, super athletic, and you, you saw some of that on uh, on Thursday night. But, again, a little inconsistent. It has to do with the defensive line and the linebackers as well, and Chase Allen is the goal line defense was tremendous. Uh, it was absolutely tremendous. You know, I thought – we uh, we just locked up. I, I can't remember how many. I think we had two goal line stands. Um, maybe we had more than that, but I think two for sure. I know at the end of the game there we had one, and we had one earlier um, in the game. So the defensive line had a dominant performance, and it was really nice to see them as a unit. I thought the defense dominated all night, only allowing 14. Was how many points did they allow? Uh, I think nine points. Yeah, nine points. Uh, nine points. Was that nine points? Uh, or six points, I can't remember, but they, they didn't allow, you know, they just by far the best performance as, as a defense that we've had. Obviously, letting up 80 points throughout three preseason games is not the what you want to see out of your young unit, um, and they dominated their, uh, and, you know, the the Vikings backup uh, QB, uh, whose name's, Ma- Ma- uh, God, his name's escaping me right now, but he, he's had a pretty solid preseason, and uh, I thought we did a great job of containing him. He's an athletic guy, and our defense line dominated the entire night, so, Best performance from our twos and threes that our defense has had by far throughout the entire preseason. Really nice to see that from both units, really, if you think about it. So, um, solid all-around team play. I thought, you know, to, to talk about special teams for a minute, they played terrible. I mean, you know, when we got to safety, you know, there's a lot of balls that were dropped in. Thank God we recovered them. But Tory McTire, if there was one complaint I had from the man all night, that, you know, really does not look natural, you know, uh, fields and kicks. And some muffed catches and muffed punts and stuff of that nature. You know, really good night for overall for the the, the young Dolphins, um, this young Dolphins group. Uh, and yeah, so that's going to be it, guys. That's been your Miami Dolphins recap for this week. Can't wait for September 10th, as I think when we play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm so excited to get this season started already. Um, this team, I, I, I like this team a lot. I really do. I really, really like I like this team a whole a great deal. Uh, they're going to be fun to watch. So uh, I am Skaggs to Chain 83. A couple housekeeping things before I let you guys go. Number one, if you guys haven't yet, please go check out DolphinsTalk.com. They are the one of the best fan sites. Uh, on the internet they have you know they, they write articles they do a daily podcast show they have another podcast show um if you guys are itching for even more dolphins content go check them out 
um, and they're gonna do. Uh, hopefully, we're, we're, I'm trying to work something out right now, uh, and it's taking me a very, very long time because I've been busy uh, juggling like 50 different things. But I'm working on some some uh, a cool cool project for you guys, and it's all thanks to DolphinsTalk.com. So go show them some love. Um, and if you haven't yet, please go check out the channel. Uh, if you're new to this channel, we have the best community on YouTube. Uh, if you're a Dolphins fan, we you know we do a fan Q and A every, every week. Uh, we have nice conversations down in the comment section below. So if if you want to be a part of the conversation, you want to be a part of the community, uh, please go check out the channel. And I'm Skyx Eighty Three, and I will see you guys in the next one.